Christopher in Huntingdon. Good morning, Christopher. Good morning to you. Nigel, good morning. First of all, you, you have to accept that the European dream is a success, uh, as it was set up by Winston Churchill. Do you or do you not? Uh, I would have thought quite the reverse. If you look at the fact that uh, what has happened over the course of the last few years is whenever you ask the European people or the members of any individual no, no, member no, state stop, whether stop they it. want it, they say no. What do you mean, Christopher? Listen, listen to what I said. When the, when, the European community, when the European dream was put together by Winston Churchill after the last war, OK, you have to accept his dream has been achieved, yes or no? Well, it wasn't put together by Winston Churchill. It was put the together idea by... was put together by Winston Churchill. No, I don't accept that, I don't accept that at all, uh, well, because, because, because one of the key things that Churchill said, if you're going to quote him, is that whatever happened in terms of European cooperation, that <gasps> Britain should not be a part of it. No, that was not what was said at all. What he said quite clearly, was that we needed to come together as a European community to stop the killing of people. Without Britain, the two, without the, Britain the, being the a two member. People. However, let us move on from that point. So you accept that has been a success. Now, no, 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 I've made the point that Churchill yeah. said Britain shouldn't be a part of it. No, you're wrong there, but we won't go into that because you're wrong. Um, oh now, dear, well, I can't going, do much against we, that sort of nonsense, what, can what, I? What are we going to do? When we, when we pull out of Europe, you are suggesting we do... How are you going to replace all the jobs that are going to be lost by European companies moving out because of the trade tariffs, the tra trade barriers that you are going to have to put up and are going to be put well, up? We're talking about 20 million people. Well, so we will. Do with them? 20 million? Wow, that's even more than uh, Tony Blair used to boast about. That's extraordinary. Well, of course you're right. There will be some job losses. Ah. Um, the MEPs will all lose their jobs. And uh, the British Commissioner will lose her job, so that'll be very sad. So about 100 people will lose their jobs. Uh, thereafter, what we will do is we will revert to a trade deal similar to that that is enjoyed by the Swiss or the Norwegians. And if little countries like that can organise for themselves advantageous trade deals, then I'm quite certain that the EU's market, biggest marketplace can have that sort of deal. So it is the biggest myth and the biggest fallacy that not being part of political union would mean we'd stop doing business. You know, Mercedes would go on selling their cars in Britain regardless whether we're part of the union or not. Now, you know as well as I do that that is not correct. That is absolute rubbish. First of all, both companies that you are talking so com countries, excuse me, that you're talking about, do not have the same amount of inputs, in imports, as we do in the United Kingdom. So you can't compare either of those two countries. Now, let's get back to reality. Where are you going to find the markets to replace the business that comes in because of the tariffs that you are going to put up? Listen, Where are you going even, to get those markets Even from? Giscard d'Estaing, Neil <clears throat> Kinnock, all these, these great men of the European project have repeatedly said over the last ten years, if Britain doesn't want to be part of political union and wants to have a simple free trade agreement, that is fine by us. And of course it's fine. We import far more from the EU than we export to the EU. And what we're talking about here is opening up British business to markets, to adding to our business around the rest of the world, because it is Where? quite extraordinary. Where? Where? Well, I'll give you an example. There's a, there's a, there's a little organisation that has 29% of the global population within it called the Commonwealth. And at the end of 2005... Most of which are bankrupt. And at the end of bankrupt, you name me a single Australian bank that's gone under. You name me a single Canadian bank that's gone under. It's many of the Commonwealth Canada, countries... Canada relies on it's, America. It's many Canada of, would not be interested it's many in of the... It is many of the Commonwealth countries, in fact, that are doing enviably well at this moment in time. And what they would like is, oh, for, the, is for the United really Kingdom... Well, is for the United Kingdom to enter into free trade arrangements, okay. arrangements with them, but we're banned from doing it. Christopher, thank you for that call. Thanks, uh, take care. But, uh, interesting stuff, thank you. Um, quick question before we hear from Helen, who has our travel news. Uh, Helen, Nigel Farage, Nigel Farage, Helen. Hello. Hello there. Um, please would you ask Nigel what the UKIP policy is on voluntary and mandatory repatriation? That is from Jack in Birmingham. I mean, uh, an alliance between you and the BNP was mooted and you... No, you no, 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 Wait, no, let no. me finish. And you firmly rejected it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's true. It was yeah. mooted, and you firmly well, rejected it. It wasn't mooted. It was a publicity stunt by by the BMP well, they seeking it. publicity, they mooted and, it, it. and it was kicked into. The... Listen, we are going into these European elections. You, your first caller asked about how many candidates we'd have. I'm asking what, what, what this Jack in Birmingham is asking. We have six. Well, I'm going to answer Jack right now by telling him this: we have 69 candidates in England, Scotland, and Wales. That is the total list for the European elections. Of our 69 candidates, five of ours are black and Asian candidates, 
born overseas, who've taken British residency, who are proud to be standing for UKIP in these elections. We do not and have never advocated repatriation of any kind at all. We are a non-racist, non-sectarian Would you political stop mass party. immigration? Of course. Of course. What we've done is absolutely insane since 1997 to say to the whole of Eastern Europe that because we're members of a European Union, we will allow any number of millions of you that want to come into this country is highly irresponsible. It has not been good for Britain. It also, incidentally, has not been good for Poland, Lithuania and those countries as well. Pat is in Devizes in Wiltshire and Paul is in Pulborough. Um, and Nigel... Um, I'd like to ask Nigel Farage why I should vote for him. I voted for, uh, against Europe in the referendum in the 70s. Mm -hmm. Uh, every European election since, I have gone to the polls and I have written Britain out across my ballot paper. Well, if that's what you want, then you jolly well better vote for the one party that advocates that and the one party that has been giving voice to this for the last ten years. Ten years ago, three of us were elected to the European Parliament to argue the things which you believe in. Prior to that, there was nobody, absolutely nobody in public life that was advocating it. Oh, and, I agree. And we've well, seen... Years, until this morning, and, I have never heard you espouse any policies as to what you would do within Britain. The thing is, if everybody feels the same as who feels like I do, went to the polls and did what I did, then we would win by default because the number of spoiled ballot papers we no, put out on them would probably outnumber every other but you, vote for ever, but any you, other party. But you would be ignored. So the, the whole point... The achievement would be there. No, it what bothers me, Nigel, is that I want to see something absolutely concrete and decent about what you want to do with this country when you get it out of Europe. Well, I think the I'm first... not one of these people who thinks that, you know, I'm quite sure there'll be job losses. There'll be a damn sight more job losses on mainland Europe than there will be here. OK, Pat. Because they import far more to us than... than well, let's, than, let's, than let's cross, them. Let's, let's cross one bridge at a time. That. Pat, let's... let's, let's about what you do with this country once you get it right, out of okay. Europe. Pat, you know, I mean, listen, we could talk all day about what we ought to be trying to do with the education system, with the tax system, with our relationship with the rest of the world and all of those things. But the first thing we've got to recognise is that virtually the entire political establishment in this country, by which I mean the Labour, Lib Dem and Conservative parties and the Commons and the Lords, support continued membership of the EU at all costs. We have, we have got one... They can jump on when they get we, out have got, we have got one hell of a fight on our hands and what you need are champions to fight for your point of view and I put it to you that it's UKIP MEPs that are your champions. Yes, but I do not want to see this country come out of Europe. I want to see it come out of Europe desperately. What I don't want to do is to get it out of Europe and end up in a limbo. You have to have a decent exit plan, Nigel. And if you've got one, you're not making enough noise about it. Mrs Thatcher was your great heroine, a uh, political heroine. She didn't want to come out of Europe, did she? Um, in the early days, she was a great supporter of it until towards the end of her time mm. when she saw what the true intentions were and realised that she'd been conned herself. Do you believe there are people in the, in the current Tory cabinet and higher echelons of the Conservative Party at the moment who basically want us to withdraw but can't... Yes. Because they... Who? There are quite a few of them. Who? Uh, I'm not going to say because uh, they, they... If they say that to me in confidence... Are they in the shadow cabinet? And um, there are people in the shadow cabinet, definitely, who, if there was a referendum, let's say, and there was the freedom to campaign or vote either way, would vote for Britain to withdraw from political union. It does exist... Th there aren't many of them. The real Do they talk line, to you? Yeah, some do. I mean, some don't, you know, but <laughs> I can live with that. <laughs> the big problem Mr Cameron's got is that 75 to 80% of his own members and voters would actually agree with the UKIP point of view. But there are other priorities. There are schools, there are hospitals, there are getting rid of the Labour Party as there far are. as they're concerned, and Europe's not the top of people's agenda. Well, 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 75... Without having to pay these enormous sums to Brussels, with some self-determination, we could actually put some decent education and health service back into this country. But I just wonder if... if, if money you... which goes to Brussels, which goes to other countries to support other countries... Yeah. <clears throat> OK. Now, I, I worked in Ireland in the 90s, the money that went into Ireland's infrastructure and whatnot, which was coming out of our purse, because Ireland and Greek, Greece at the time were the two highest... Um, and Ireland did very, very well out of it. Pat, thank you. Let's speak to Tim in Wales. Let's speak to Tim. Hello, Tim. Good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, uh, what I'd like to say is that there's uh, £38 million pounds of uh, a combination of European, Welsh Assembly and local authority money... Um, due to be spent uh, over the next couple of years uh, in many towns in North Wales, 14 separate projects. 
uh, what is Nigel's reaction to that? And uh, how, how, how would he actually replace uh, European funding coming into various things? Like I myself was nearly homeless um, uh, at one point, and I was actually saved from that brink uh, by a project which was actually funded by Objective One European funding. Well, Tim, let's just get it straight. There is no such thing as European money. European money is our money. You know, we put £20 in, they give us £10 back. You know, don't tell me we should feel good about it. Uh, we, we, listen, th of course there are, there are projects that the British government needs to fund, and you're talking about Wales, and one of the things I would do in Wales, automatically, to save the taxpayer money, apart from paying, not paying away money to the EU, is I would get away with that whole layer of Assembly members in Wales and make Welsh MPs sit in the Welsh Assembly once a month and get on with devolved Welsh business. If we cut down the cost of bureaucracy, if we cut down the cost of too many politicians, there'd be a lot more money to spend on sensible social projects. That sounds fairly reasonable in many, many respects. 